Before I begin, just a show of hands, who in their, I guess, daily or weekly work has got a client or something they do and they just feel, ugh? Show of hands. <laughs> 50%? Okay. Interesting. Okay, so um, I'm Stu, I'm head of digital and co founder of Creative Bloom. Uh, we help the good guys get found. So I'm going to start with where, where we are now. We have the pleasure of working with some uh, large and uh, a medium and small organisations and our purpose is to help the green and the good. We were set up by a collection of eco-designers, environmental scientists and surfers who have background with digital and we want to create an agency that helps green businesses and ethical businesses get found. By that way we, yeah, we felt we were helping the planet and we were doing our thing. Didn't always start like that. Um, so currently my team are very active in the community as well. Um, we are, we are, our bigger clients, we now have a pay it on model where they'll actually pay for us to work with smaller organisations and charities and a pay for my team to be able to take time off and actually get involved with their passions. We run beach cleans across the city and they get involved with various charities across the city as well. We have our voice as well, so we're very opinionated about what we talk about in social media, and we don't pull any punches. We'll point out where we see things we don't like, that, uh, align, that aren't aligned to our values, and we'll point out those businesses and organisations which are doing a good thing as well. Wasn't always like this. <laughs> we used to take every job we could. Why? And we, and we also helped shift products that didn't meet our values. We were very much, very much in that space. We were just, you know, we were taking the big stuff on and we were just pushing it through. It caused rifts within our team. Our team couldn't get behind us. Here's our <coughs> monthly meeting with our, one of our clients, our account manager over there. Over there. <laughs> and, <laughs> might resonate. <coughs> couldn't get behind us and that, and, 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 and that caused us real problems because when you're running a trying to tight, tight ship in your small agency, cash flows are small, you really need your people behind you. And it was us, as I have to look at myself, what, what we did as leaders in our business and the work we took on the clients we were exposing our team to, uh, it, it, the whole thing just didn't work. But why did we do that? So we, you know, we, set, up, we set up Creative Bloom with the intention of being an eco-mission-led agency at the beginning. And for some reason, we'd morphed into something which wasn't. <coughs> we feared the cash flow. I, I was literally shitting myself every day. I had, <laughs> I, had, I, had, I had seven employees and mortgages and rent to worry about every day. And that's, you know, that's a lot of billing one month, and that's a lot of client work that, that we came through. And every day I was poring over the cash flow and looking at the revenue forecast, then what's coming in, like where's that opportunity coming from? Not really thinking about the work or our purpose. And uh, resonating with what Alice said, we were closing down the opportunities that we actually wanted to do as a business. And, and that's what we became. We also didn't always recruit the people who shared our values. This poem there. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, you know, when it, it, things were going fast tracked. We'd grown very quickly. We'd grown from two to three to four to five to six to seven. Uh, and you know, so I was bringing people in because they had a good skill set. So like, we, need, we really need an SEO, we really need a good website developer. But they didn't share our ethos of helping the planet, being really important for you. And, and that, starts to, that starts to erode the, the values of the business with, 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 with the rest of the team as well. So what I really wanted to talk to you about as well was what we actually did to get out of that and get to that place where we are now, where we're actually able to choose and work with the organisations we do. We're able to have our voice confidently and, and just talk to you about those tangible things. So the first thing we did, and apologies I haven't got a slide about this, because I only actually had this light bulb moment when I was thinking about it last night. There was, it came back to one exercise I did with the team, and we've got the entire team, and things were starting to collapse a little bit. Uh, we'd, lost an, we'd lost quite a big account, people were unhappy, I could see people unhappy, so we did one exercise, we just cancelled everything, spent the entire afternoon and whiteboarded it. And I drew a diagram on the board, like this, and I drew three circles. One circle said like, one circle said dislike, and one circle said have to do. So these are the things that we like to do as individuals, the things that we dislike doing as individuals, and the things that we just have to do to keep the wheels turning. And over here, and I purposely 
put this over here. It said, in a perfect world, we would be, and I got all of the team, and the directors included, uh, in a coloured post-it note, to put post-it notes uh, in the various boxes. And so there was a lot of stuff in here. <laughs> there was a lot of stuff in here. There was not so much stuff in here, and there was a lot of stuff in here. And this flipped my business model, because that dawned on me. Why isn't any of this stuff in here? Why is all of this stuff not in here? And you know, why is any of this stuff over here as well? And, that, and it, it, was, it, was, it was my epiphany as a director of the business that I'd let the business run away from me. Um, but it was very difficult then to go, well, actually, how am I actually going to physically and tangibly change my business where I've got seven employees, I've got to keep the revenue running. It's not like we can just switch off clients. It's not like I can just magic a new RFP. It's not like I can magic my time to spend a lot of time, a lot more time than we were already doing pitching. So I'm going to talk to you about the, 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 the steps that we did. So, uh, and we did this with the entire team as well. So um, we, what, what I noticed is, a, a lot of my team had like kind of individual interest and individual portfolios. So um, we, we gave our employees the opportunity to uh, move down to four days a week. So we turned the entire business to four days a week. So they, everyone took a bit of a pay cut and everyone had a day to actually pursue their own personal interest. We also gave uh, some of our employees a chance to go freelance so they could enjoy their own portfolios and they would prioritise work with us. That gave me a more flexible cost base gave them more opportunity to actually enjoy some of the things that weren't quite available to them throughout our agency. Um, we then sacked the bad clients, <laughs> which was a very nice moment. It's not us, it's you. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and we've all been there, right? <laughs> and what, one of the important things as well is we stopped trying to do everything. If you went, uh, I think Ben, you took the copy from our website from four years ago. When you had, uh, <laughs> got IP issues about that. I've still got data driven on there, and I stand by that. But, <laughs> but we stopped doing everything. We were doing trying to do so many things, and that was that was more of, as a result of our client going, "Oh, I needed to do our social media. I need to do our content." And I'm looking at it going, mm, "I can get somebody, pay somebody else to do that, or we can try and kind of fudge it ourselves and upskill ourselves and." As you do, you know, because I'm looking at the seven people's rent I've got to pay. I'm like, okay, well, you know, I can, I can pay another agency to do that aspect, or we can try and do it ourselves. So we took on too much. So we do three things now. We do how to get found on Google. We do how to get websites to work when a user arrives there, and how to work out what is going on on a regular basis. And we do that with a good strategy of pinning it for green businesses. It's a lot simpler than where, where, where we came from. Um, and it was, it was those things that gave me the ability, so we were able to contract the cost base and have a much more flexible workforce for us to then be able to go out and actually position and target and work with the clients that we wanted to work. Um, and everyone's a lot happier <laughs> as a result. Um, so, one thing I would say as well, is a very, I think a very, 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 very important thing for, for a digital agency, and for, and for me, is you don't win business, and you don't, you, you can't get out there and get your values out there if you sat behind your screen. You know, you're, you're a local digital, digital business, don't just be there digitally, get your face out and you know, find your angle and be passionate about it and engage with your local community, and that's when the magic starts to happen. Thank you very much.